This podcast of the Model Health Show is presented to you by Sean Stevenson with Rare Gym Productions. For more information, visit themodelhealthshow.com. Welcome to the Modern Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing, talented co-host and producer of the Modern Health Show, Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? What's up, Sean? Are you running in place right now? I that am, because I'm waiting for you to ask me how I'm feeling. <laughs> All right, how are you feeling? I've got my movementum going, Sean. Movementum. Yes. All right. All I'm right. in motion. I got momentum, and I am moving I in like a positive that. direction. See, here's what's so crazy. You didn't even know about the show topic today. I, yeah, you, and they momentum, don't know you surprised me Momentum like that. is a part of this episode. We are. So, yeah we're, yeah, we're here. Right, right. We're here. We're in like an astral womb. We're like 20. What? We're Is siblings. Like the Beyonce, Jay-Z twins, maybe? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, yes. I get it. Right. I get that. Right. All right. Well, let's give birth the then. Let's, let's come yes. on out. Everybody, thank Me you first. so much for tuning. Hey, I want to be older. You want to be first? Okay, good. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. We've got an incredible, important episode lined up for you guys. We're going to be talking about morning routines Sweet. that supercharge your fat loss your health, and your success. And why does this matter so much? Well, the way you start your day Mm -hmm. is what creates that momentum. And so many successful people, as you'll hear today, throughout time, Mm -hmm. (laughs) as well as some of the most (laughs) successful people today, have these very consistent morning routines, these things that they've implanted to make sure that they're setting themselves up for success each yeah, day. Yeah. That's really the key because we want to put success on automatic. We want to put the results that we're working for with our fitness, with our health, with our success, whether it's relationship success, uh, financial success, your career success. We need to have strategies and pieces in place. And we're going to dissect what that actually looks like. We're going to go through a sampled, a really great template oh, good. of what that can look like. And also we're going to deliver some science on why this actually matters because It does. Of course. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to something that I've been really paying a lot of attention to lately, and that is creating an injury proof body. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we can all get in mechanical complacency. And so what does that mean? Well, we start working out, but we're doing the same old movements. We're doing the same patterns. We might change things up a bit, and that's great because we could change, create an entirely different workout Mm -hmm. simply changing the speed changing the amount of rest time. There's a lot of different factors that can go into that. You know, the the concentric and eccentric movement, how much time we're taking on each piece. But because of the way that conventional lifting is set up, especially with with strength training, we get caught doing the same movements. We're doing a bench press, same movement pattern. We're doing an incline press, same movement pattern. Even if you're doing Mm push-ups, you're training your body to be strong in that one direction. Right. And it's really difficult to go outside of that when you're doing these conventional movements because it generally requires a barbell or something like that. And what I've been implementing, and I highly encourage everybody to do this, you've got to start doing some unconventional training. This is going to help you to be strong in multiple directions. And I use the tools, these the training equipment from on it, the steel clubs, right. the steel maces, mm-hmm. the kettlebells, primal bells. I have primal bells. Okay. Did I tell you they have an Iron Man kettlebell? Oh my goodness. It is lay sexy. I bet it, it it's, is. It's so it's so it's so cute. Please take a picture. It's and fantastic. Post it. Here's why I do these things. Okay. I got caught because of that 80-20 rule, right? You do 20% of the things that get 80% of the results, mm-hmm. especially when you're locked for time. And the same thing goes for me that happens with a lot of people. You've got kids, you've got a work schedule, you've got a show to do, you've got travel, you've got speaking all over the world. Mm -hmm. Where do you find the time? Well, you do the things that really get the most bang for the buck. And I got caught in that pattern and I ended up spraining my wrist because I'm doing those same patterns. Because, you know, I grab a couple one tan dumbbells, you know, and start pressing, you know, just a little, little strength. (laughs) <laughs> a little scramp I have. You strong. It's, it's so, you know, doing those type of movements, but yeah. I got in the way because oh. I had started to just, you know, I got kind of, quote, busy mm-hmm. not doing the simple things that I could add on as a supplement, right? At least I can spend a day working with those tools or add them on at the end of my workout. Mm-hmm. Either way, I can get some great results. And so by injury proofing my body, and I was telling myself for a couple of weeks then, it's like, I really need to work on my wrist and my rotation of my, of my wrists and shoulders. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, because... You know, like your intuition knows. Yeah. And how, but what do we do? We so often don't pay attention to that. Oh, that I ignore, I ignore. <laughs> until <laughs> it just smacks you. Get, yeah, my body's got to like 
put me in a chokehold and it's like, look, are you going to listen to me or am I going to have to make this <laughs> the sleeper? Difficult? Go to sleep, Jay. Go to sleep. <laughs> right. So like, that's when I start calling you. Help. Now, here's what's so cool <laughs> is that we just got access 10 percent off all of the training equipment from on it kettle for the too? model health show. Yes. Oh, the primal man. bells, the Marvel kettlebells. And yeah. also they have uh, plates like weight plates. Captain America Shield. Oh, really? Super cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know how hard it is to partner with Marvel? Like right. the litigation you got to exactly. go through? Exactly. They did that. Just <laughs> uh, these things are that not only they're great for your body. I mean, beyond great for your body, but they also make it fun. Yeah, like they, they add this little interesting yeah, fun components. Like I want to, I want to play with this. Right, you know, I right. want to have some fun with this particular uh, exercise equipment. So head over there, check them out. On it. dot com mm-hmm. forward slash model. That's O N N I T dot com forward slash M O D E L. 10% off wow. all of their health and human performance supplements mm-hmm. and 10% off all the training equipment as well. Head over, check them out. Now let's get to the iTunes review of the week. This one is from Taking Back Control with five stars. Just saying thank you. Sean and Jade, I cannot say enough how grateful I am for your show. Both of you and all of your guests. Their gusto for knowledge and passion for better health wellness have found me at the perfect moment in my life. I'm a nursing student and I've been listening to your show in my two hours spent in my car each day. The information I gather from all of you has led me to a happier, healthier life. I no longer suffer from symptoms of PTSD, Mm. TBI, depression, anxiety or high blood sugar. I have struggled with this for years, and since returning from my last deployment in Iraq, I share your show with every veteran I can so they can also have the tools to take back control of their lives. I can now enter the nursing field in the best mental and physical shape of my life and hopefully share this with my future patients. You have truly given me the tools to transform my life, something I never thought was possible. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah. Healer, heal thyself, you know, and wow. Now to carry that on and to share that and to and to be of service to other people. And your story is just amazing. Yeah. And I, I just commend you and so grateful for you. And I'm happy that you found us. And uh, wow, that's just mm-hmm. very, very heartwarming. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Everybody, thank you so much for leaving these reviews on iTunes. We truly, truly do appreciate that. And that was probably the first time I heard Gusto yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a review as well. So thank you for that little piece, like too. That gusto. So, guys, if you haven't left a review for iTunes, please hop over there and leave us a review. It, I truly, truly do appreciate that. And on that note, let's get to our topic of the let's day. Do that. So today we're talking about morning routines that supercharge your fat loss and health. You did that for me. And why this matters <laughs> so much. We have to begin this with... A truth check. Oh, boy. Right. Checking in on truth and being honest with ourselves about where we are right now in our lives. Mm -hmm. How did we produce the results that we have currently? Because the truth is we produce these results in our lives. We tend to come into this situation, especially as we're working to become better. We have a lot of victim mentality. (laughs) You know, these things happen to me. They said this about me. I was born into these circumstances. These things are all true. Right. But you still have the power to decide. You still have the power to make good in whatever circumstances that you find yourself in. And there are countless stories of this. If you look at the story of Oprah. Right. Right. The big O. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the other big O. <laughs> no, but <no>. anyways, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. And either way, we coming, feel great. <laughs> right. I mean, she's literally a, a b- 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 billionaire yeah. with a B. Yeah. And she Multi. came from, I mean, just straight up poverty and. Ah, man. I mean, the stories of of abuse and sexual abuse is just, Mm -hmm. wow. You know, it's it's, to to hear that story and to see the impact that she's having, whether or not you like her, you know, no disrespect to anybody who's a a, oh hater, you know, but the bottom line is we all we all come into this life in different different circumstances. Mm -hmm. And what have you been doing to produce the results that you have right now? Because your choices determine the life that you currently have, the person you decide to spend your life with. That puts you on a whole different, just what if it was somebody else? I know some people can't even imagine that. Right. What if you mess with that person? You know that, that one woo, person. I'm so glad that you that dodged decoy, the bullet, man, right? Man, I got, woo. <laughs> or, you know, maybe it was like a happier circumstance. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I think Madonna was like Sean Penn yeah. was a lover of life. It was 50 people ago. <laughs> but 
Oh. You know, and no disrespect to the Madonna, uh, Madonna Naders out I'll there. I'll sit on her porch too. But <laughs> it's just understanding, you know, our decisions and you know where we choose to yeah. live, where what school we choose to go to, Who all of these do things. A podcast with yes, all of these things. She's reaching out. <laughs> all of these things unfold our story. Mm-hmm. Now, with that said, these are these big decisions that are in those small moments, right? But in truth, it's the small decisions that you make daily that determine the ultimate success that you experience. So that's why this is so important. How you start your day matters because every single day is an opportunity. Every single day is a clean slate for you to create the life that you are truly here to live. And so why is this important? Number one, a consistent morning routine provides a sense of normalcy that, (laughs) that roots, that roots you, you get rooted in that sense of normalcy because Certainty is a human need. We've talked about the human needs uh, via Tony Robbins Mm -hmm. before on the show. And we all have this need for certainty. And so because of the many happenings of the day outside of that are uncertain. For example, you have a meeting, right? But you don't know how that meeting is going to go exactly. Or you have to commute for 30 minutes, but you don't know how traffic is going to be. There's so many uncertain factors that are outside of your control. Your morning routine is something that you can control. It creates that normalcy to start your day. And also another big key here is that an intelligent morning routine effectively eliminates wasted days. Every single day you can start off with a win within the first 30 minutes of your day, the first hour. So you're not trying to pine away and try to feel like you got better. You can get that out of the way as soon as your day starts. Another key here is it generates momentum. Having a consistent morning routine generates momentum and there's actually a whole science there's a psychological momentum if people want to look into that so the psychological science of momentum and so this is important to understand as well take this away momentum works both ways there's negative momentum that's right that gets created there's also positive momentum Mm -hmm. all right so and here's a study this was a 2014 study of rowers this was looking at athletes because also When we hear momentum, we tend to think about sports Mm -hmm. a lot. So I looked for some examples for that. So this 2014 study of rowers found that overall effort exerted decreased more during times of negative momentum and increased during times of positive momentum. All right, a simple thing. And this is, we're talking about the momentum of them winning, right? Having those consistent wins. And so as they have that momentum going, their exertion picked up when they were used to winning yep. and it went down when they were used to losing. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And also they found that interpersonal coordination also got worse under negative momentum. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, people react to short term momentum changes also depends on their long term momentum. So what does that mean? There's another study of rowers that showed that athletes who have a long term momentum against them are more sensitive to negative changes in the short term. Okay. So if you're if you're I have that black cloud hovering right, over you right. and something negative happens, it's it's even harder. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you have that positive momentum going, you can kind of brush yourself off and get back in the game much faster. You take it as a confirmation and, and you can because you're expecting that you've got that current. You're flowing down that current, that downhill stream. And you're like, see, mm-hmm. this is how it was going. Right. But. If you're in a a stream of positivity, which is where I try to exist, I I tell folks I'm pretty much there about 85% of the time. Row, row, row your boat. Let's go. (laughs) Gently down the street. Merrily, merrily. Hey. Life life is is but but a dream. dream. (laughs) That just happened. That just happened. (laughs) See? We might have some course connections. So (laughs) as we move away from the from the little kids songs. Now I want to share a study with you guys, and this is actually looking at morning routines specifically. Okay. Now, this was in 2016, and this was following 450 men and found that making subtle changes to the morning habits for these men, the body clock can be manipulated to make mornings not only more tolerable, but actually improved their overall daily outlook. The researchers said that, quote, if optimized, a person's morning routine can boost energy, increase focus, and build Mm self-esteem, end quote. Mm -hmm. So see that. I had to make this show because we did an, an entire episode, a masterclass on evening routines mm-hmm. and how powerful those are at improving your sleep, at increasing your metabolism, right? Your sleep, your evening routine actually influences your metabolism. Crazy stuff, 
but we'll of course link up and there's going to be a lot of go back to episodes today, a lot of resources for you. So make sure to get the show notes at themodelhealthshow.com. But that show was powerful. We received so many incredible messages about that episode. But what about the other side of this? And during that episode, and there's going to be some consistencies here. We talked about what routines do for our brains and actually making something physical out of this. Not some airy fairy like you should have a morning routine so you be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Not like that. (laughs) All right. This is actually like what's happening physically. And so this, this starts with the conversation of myelin. And so myelin coats the axons that transmit electrical impulses throughout your brain. What does that mean, Sean? What does that mean? Well, basically, when you do a behavior, that behavior starts to create this connection in your brain, right? So there's this electrical, but it's physical, Mm -hmm. physical electrical connection that starts to fire and create that pattern. The more you repeat that behavior, the stronger that pattern becomes, the stronger that behavior comes. And it gets more myelinated. There's more myelin that gets laid down to insulate that nerve pathway from firing. So this is like a good example of Steph Curry shooting a basketball, right? And again, no disrespect to the Cavs fans. Shout out to everybody in Ohio. Some of us are still tender. (laughs) (laughs) But that ability to shoot the Mm three-pointer, you know, as many times as he's done it, he doesn't have to think about it anymore. It's laid down. That myelin is so dense and created this nerve firing from all these different directions And we are doing this to ourselves, whether we know it or not. We're doing this also because it's not practice makes perfect. Right. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Sure. Better yet, it's practice makes permanent. So whether you're doing what is advantageous to you or not. Or not, right. Your brain is locking that behavior in. This is why it can be so difficult to break what we call, quote, bad habits. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So So it will take some persistence because I've had to fight that on both ends. On the evening routine getting home and I'm pooped, then I'm wanting to sit down and not go into my routine. But that created a habit that was already there. Mm, It became something that automatically after a long day, you get home, you don't want to do anything else. I had to start making a a change and a new association before I even get to the house Mm, late or anytime after six Mm -hmm. to say tonight, I want my routine I will have my Epsom salt bath. Mm. I will have a conversation with my husband and I will turn my phone off mm. at, at nine o'clock. And I have to say it before I even enter the door yeah. to start beginning to lay down a new message. And the same thing in the morning. This morning I woke up thinking, oh, no, I forgot something. Some work thing was yeah. the first. And I started to reach for the yeah. phone. And I said, nope. I told myself I had to say it out loud. That Chris thought I was talking to him. <laughs> and I said, yeah. no, no, I'm, just, I'm trying to break this cycle. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to do the first things first. Yeah. And then I'll get to it. It'll be there. I want to come back to that point. Exactly. Of going for our phone first thing in the morning. Okay, good. And tying that in here and finding a way that, again, that we can, everything is an option. Not saying that that is a behavior that can't be something positive, but we'll dissect that in a little bit. Awesome. So every habit begins with a psychological pattern called a habit loop, right? (laughs) A habit loop. Makes sense. And it's a three part process. First, there's a cue or a trigger that tells your brain to go in automatic mode and let a behavior unfold. And the example that I gave on the evening routines, Michael Hyatt, when he was on the show, he talked about activation triggers. So this is something that happens that triggers a behavior instant, instantly. So for him, he set it up in his office that as soon as it's, I believe it's five o'clock, the lights go out automatically in his office, telling him he needs to get out of there and go and spend time with his family because he knows he can have a tendency towards being a workaholic Mm -hmm. and his family is very important to him. So he created this activation trigger. Then there's the routine. That's the second part and which this is where the behavior itself is taking place. That's what we tend to think about when we think about habits. And this is from Charles Duhigg who wrote the power of habit. Now we first have to have the trigger, which is for you, you talked about When I get home, because before I get home, then bam, 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 these certain things happen. It's an automatic thing until we realize it and either change the trigger or change the behavior. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's first. We've got the trigger. Second, we have the routine, which is the actual thing that we do. And then third, and this is very important. uh, This is what he talks about. Charles Duhigg is the reward. Something that your brain likes that helps it to remember the habit loop in the future. All right, your brain is, it has to be anchored in. 
This is where we mess up when we're trying to create positive habits is we're not getting the reward. We have to get the reward and to be conscious of that. Right. 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 So we can consciously come into this and giving our brain these habit loops, creating the habit loops consciously and not missing out on the reward portion. So that keeps it from being an entanglement. Yeah. So if you're fighting to do the thing without the reward, then you're going, it's going to look more like like a shame. It's wrong. It's like, it's totally against human nature. (laughs) You know, it's like, why am I doing this for real? You know, even with negative habits, we tend people that, that feeling of smoking the cigarette, Mm -hmm. right? You get that reward, right? And then we try to start exercising and we just feel sore, right? This is like, (laughs) your your brain is like, what is wrong with you? Don't put ourselves in harm's way, (laughs) right? So we have to find the reward portion of that. And so now that we've got a little bit of the science behind the scenes, I want to talk about my personal morning routine from back in the day, all right? Back in the day when I wasn't doing too well, all right? Back in the day when I was struggling with my health, when I was struggling uh, just getting to class, right, because of this chronic uh, so-called incurable spinal condition. And so I had trouble just literally getting to campus. And so, you know, continuously dropping classes and that kind of thing. And for me, my morning routine was like, the premise was I had no real direction in my life. Mm. You know, and my daily mission was to just see how long I can stay in bed, all right, and still make it and be there on time. That was the mission. Now, when I say that, some people, you can identify with that right now. Uh, yeah. Right? The <laughs> daily mission was to see how long can I stay in bed mm-hmm. to in, in, until the time I have to be to where I need to be. And so for me, I was like, okay, it's 15 minute drive to get there by 7 a.m. plus five minutes to get dressed and brush my teeth. All right? So, okay, then I get up at 640. All right? 640. And that was my daily life, Ready right? <laughs> Very sad way of being. Yeah. And this is because not only am I putting my stress level at 10 when I actually get up yes. in the morning, but I'm playing small. Mm-hmm. This is the real issue here. I'm playing small. and I'm not doing anything to put myself at an advantage. And I'm obviously not going to be showing up as my best, whatever I'm showing up to at seven o'clock, right? And so stressing to show up on time. This is a big part of this morning routine portion and, and, being able to, to personalize it for you, which we'll come back to. But what does struggling to be on time cost you? Oh, it's, man. It's stressful. Yes. It's very stressful, and it's stressful to be average. That's the thing. That's what the stress does to us. That's what it's costing us. It's costing us an average life. And I love this quote from Chris Rock's father that he told him one day. You know, Chris was like, he was uh, working to get to some uh, audition or something like that, and uh Chris was like, you know, I got to get going because I need to be on time, right? And he was actually met with this important takeaway and it stuck with me. He said that if you're not early, then you're late. Mm-hmm. Well, you shouldn't be trying to be on time if you're not early, then you're late. Yep. Because again, it puts you at that psychological disadvantage. You're not there. You're not settled. You're behind the ball. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. for me, again, my morning routine consisted of <laughs> how long can I stay in bed? Yeah. To, to make it to this place on time still, instead of having these success rituals that you're going to learn about today to truly create momentum, right. to create that sense of normalcy, to get some early wins yes. that all snowball into something really powerful. Which makes me think of what you mentioned earlier about the, the psychology momentum yeah. that exists. Because then if I'm thinking, well, how can I make this an epic arrival? You know, something that I'm trying to... In part in the children, I say late is not a herald trait. I make that mm, an affirmation like that. for them yeah. and that uh, early is on time, on time is late, and late is bad business. And mm. that's not how we get down. I like that. I'm going to snap for that. <laughs> I like that. But there's a psychology to that. It's in that, it's, it's, it's a mindset yeah. going in. Right, and when right. you, you mentioned purpose, that just really hit home for me. What's my purpose in it? Because yeah. if I'm going to be stressed, to be average or below average, yeah. then what's, what's exactly. the point? Yes. If I'm avoiding an exertion of energy to become something, then yeah. what's the energy exertion for? I, I, oh. Man, so t- please take that away and hear this. Yeah. It's stressful being average. Right. Everybody listening, be- you're listening to the show because you are not that. Mm. You are an exceptional human being. You're somebody who has 
potential beyond anything that you can even see. Mm -hmm. And it starts with you creating these strategies, creating these rituals for yourself to put yourself in position to be your best, right? Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's right. Right? So now we're going to go ahead and dive in and I'm going to take you through this template that I use. This is gleaning a lot from my life personally, but I'm also going to share with you some morning routines of some very successful people who decided to chime in and add to this episode wow. as well. So for me, this is the framework is called the six F's. All right, the six F's. So we're going to go through each the one. Six F framework. There you go. I love there. it. I'm going to snap again for you. <laughs> All right. All right. So we start with the six F's. So the first F mm-hmm. that we want to get in in the morning is to fuel your circulation. Fuel your circulation. This is the very first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning is I get myself hydrated by drinking high quality structured water first thing. And I'm drinking about, you know, 25 to to 30 ounces of water, uh, maybe even upwards of a liter of water. And why do I do this? Well, just a few things that water is responsible for. People have heard this many times. The majority of your body is water. We're talking about 70 to 80 percent of your water. Like when I'm looking at you, is made of water. Water is what really animates your tissues, all right? Your brain is fat and water, all right? It's kind of important, but water really functions as uh, this extracellular fluid as well as your blood, your synovial fluid, and the list goes on and on. These very, very important liquid compounds in your body need water. And when you become deficient in those things, guess what those fluids do? They literally start to get thick, right? They start to... Uh, become murky. Bloody. Yeah, yes. Good word. Yeah. Good word. Can Makes me think me of the toxic synovial? avenger. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Can you help me with synovial? Well, it's your joints. And another thing that this is really like a hallmark thing for is your DNA function. Just a small percentage drop in your body's optimal hydration level can literally damage your DNA. Your DNA is essentially printing out copies of you. So it can start to mess that process up simply being dehydrated. Also, your body, your, your neurotransmitters, they move throughout your body on a water superhighway. You know, your hormones as well. That's how things travel and communicate throughout your body. So that communication starts to get messed up. So these are just a couple of things. And we, we did a water and hydration masterclass. It's episode 73, one of the most popular episodes to date. So we'll put that in the show notes for you. If you happen to be one of the five people that didn't check out that episode <laughs> yet. Uh, so water is crucial. And why is this so important in the morning? Well, this is one of the most dehydrated times Mm -hmm. that you experience outside of like, you know, uh, getting out and doing a lot of exercise, being out in the sun and sweating, that kind of thing. When you go to sleep at night, we're talking about, you know, for the average person, somewhere between six and nine hours of not consuming liquids, right? Not consuming water. But that's not the only thing. You're not just laying there. Your, Your brain and your body are doing literally millions, millions and millions of different processes to bring you back better while you're sleeping. And there's a lot of metabolic waste that result. Even your brain, the majority of your brain is detoxifying itself when you're sleeping. 10 times more activity of your glymphatic system. This is your kind of uh, cellular, extracellular waste management system for your brain. Mm -hmm. 10 times more active when you're sleeping than when you're awake. Yeah. All right. And if you're not getting up and rehydrating your tissues, that stuff is just hanging sure. around in your body. Sure. This is literally like an, an oil change to start your day, getting out the old stuff, bringing in the new. Yeah, right? that takes it back to sludgy because if, if this is how communication and um, movement happens, and if that's still going on at night and we're not doing anything to support it, then there is going to be some backlog. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And also I want to pinpoint something That, you know, again, starting your day like this puts you at a huge advantage because you're just simply able to get in some of your hydration needs for the day. You know, I give the general template, which is half of your body weight in ounces of water each day. That's the goal. So if it's a 200 pound person, they want to drink 100 ounces of water as your baseline. You know, a 150 pound person, 75 ounces as your baseline. And then we adjust from there with your activity level and such. But that just gives people a barometer of where you want to be. But here's another important, and again, that's a, putting you in an advantage for your day, getting that hydration in first thing in the morning, because even if you're carrying around your, your fancy bottle, like, you know, Jade and I have, sometimes we forget those bottles. 
Oh, right? They just sit there and they're water. part of the ambiance. Yeah, they're part good. of the feng shui, but we're not drinking enough water. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you can get in the first part of the morning and it creates that routine, that habit. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't want to guzzle just any water. Let me make that sure. clear too. And we dissect that in episode 73. So make sure to check that out. Because a lot of people, even today, I mean, maybe at least every day, somebody messaged me on, you know, social media, whatever the case might be. Hey, Sean, there's a guy at the gym trying to sell me this alkaline water machine. What do you think about those? (laughs) Alkaline water. I'll tell you one thing. (laughs) Don't never play yourself. (laughs) Don't ever play yourself. Listen to that episode and I'll break down exactly what those machines are all about (laughs) and whether or not it's ideal for you. And this is alignment with that early too. The, The early is on time. So you're getting your water early in time before, right yes. in time for yes. you to use Being it. Being proactive. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, I that's love it. It's a nice way of saying it too. <laughs> so that's number one of our six Fs, and that is to like fuel that. your circulation. So now we're going to move on to number two. Mm-hmm. Number two is to feed your mind. Feed your mind. Now, there's few things that are as important as this, but. It's so often overlooked in our society. We begin immediately to feed our minds with things that disempower us. And that puts us on a certain track to start the day because it's creating that momentum. You know, people getting up and they're checking the news. They're they're jumping in and checking their email. You know, there's going to be some kind of stuff you don't want to hear. But why do we check email anyways? Because we're looking for that good news. But surrounded by a bunch, like 10 other things (laughs) that you got to take care of, right? And so here's the thing. We want to proactively feed our minds to start the day, not just our our body, not just our tissues, but feed directly your mind. And how do we do that? Some of the things that I love to employ and that you're going to see consistent with some of these very, very successful people is reading, right? Reading books to start the day. And so for me, I'm at least going to get 10 to 20 minutes of reading in each day. This might be a full chapter. This might be, you know, a nice, uh, nice amount of pages to get through in a book but I'm going to be reading to activate that part of my brain. And mm-hmm. it also creates this very strong neural association that that's what I do in the morning. And a great example of this is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, literally one of the richest humans walking around ever, right? And when asked how to get smarter, Buffett once held up a stack of paper and said, read 500 pages like this every day. That's how knowledge builds up, like compound interest. And he knows a thing about compound interest. So this is literally saying that knowledge compounds when you're reading that compounds. And not only are you smarter, but your genius level, your super, your Jimmy Neutron (laughs) level smartness. All right. Right. Now, he says that he sits in his office and reads um, probably about 80 percent of the day. 20 percent is execution. And this is how he gains more knowledge and becomes better at what he does. And the immediate argument is going to be, well, I don't have time to read all day like that, Sean. It, it actually, he's rich. Yeah. He's rich. Now, he's, this is the thing. Listen, he's telling you how he got rich. Yeah. He's you telling you how he got rich. And if you can't read an hour a day, can you read 30 minutes? Shoot, can you, you read can 20 do minutes? Can you, can you do, <laughs> Build up can you it. do just 10 minutes, right? Right. This is, he's literally sharing something that helped him to get to the place that, that he's at. It's so simple, but. Are we doing it Mm -hmm. right? And so we can employ and take to heart this strategy and add in some reading during the first part of the day. And for some people, you know, it's just not their cup of tea, which is all good. But I love the statement that leaders are readers. Yep. Right. And so this is in our consciousness because it's a thing. Right. When you talk to some of these very successful people, whether they're entrepreneur, whether they're heads of, of, of corporations, a big portion of their education, the continuing education, by the way, is through books. Yeah. So we got that, or we can shift gears. It's a great time if you're not a, a reader per se of audiobooks, podcasts. You can throw on a podcast in the morning while you're getting ready, while you're drinking your morning water, while you're doing your stretching, doing a little mobility work, whatever it might be, you can tie that in. But we got podcasts. You can tune in to feed your mind to start the day. There's inspirational videos like Eric Thomas, you know, our guy Eric Thomas, who's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, the number one motivational speaker in the world. And if you f- click play on one of his videos and you're not like, <laughs> let's, what? I will have to wake up the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Right. You know, whatever it is, if it doesn't get you fired up to <laughs> really right. act on your potential, <laughs> there's something wrong. There's, you're, yeah. 
You're missing. Are you breathing? There's something wrong with your medulla oblongata. Somebody bring the CPR. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, and by the way, we'll put his episode Absolutely. as well in the show notes. Both of but them. this is a great way to start your day because you get that positive momentum. You get that positive kick to start pushing in that direction. So feed your mind every day, even if it's five minutes, mm-hmm. right? Even if you make this whole process that I'm sharing today into a 10 minute process, right? Maybe this is two minutes. Like you listen to two minutes of, of uh, Eric Thomas uh, video or podcast, or you tune, tune into the model health show for five minutes, whatever the case might be, add that piece in every single morning. And I'm telling you, you're going to see huge dividends in the long run. Our buddy, so that's Al Alred, uh, say we can knock it out in six with our lifesavers. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. How, how Elrod, who wrote The Miracle Morning. Yeah. And so, and of course, he's that on the show as well. So we'll put that in the show notes. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's number two on our list of the six Fs. So with number nice. one, we got fuel your circulation. Number two, feed your mind. Feed your mind every day. Make this a part of your morning routine. Number three is to focus your power. Focus your power. So often we wake up and we're, and we're at the mercy of things that are going on in the world. You know, again, Jade gave the example in the evening of the phone, you know, being able to put that down. Or for most of us, you know, it's grabbing that phone first thing in the morning with the stress as well that, that she mentioned. And we immediately putting ourselves at the mercy of other people's agenda. Mm-hmm. You know, it just is, is what it is, whether it's a, a text from, you know, your, your sister and you want to do, you know, maybe pick up the kids or, you know, it's an email you're checking and you've got to, you know, send in some files or whatever it might be. What is your goal for the day? You, whatever your big goal was, now it's playing second or third or fourth. Mm-hmm. And the day is going to get away from you and you're not executing on your number one thing because you're taking care of what other people's needs are. And that's the thing is, it's not that that's wrong because you could do both. But it makes it so much more difficult to do yours when you put all those other things in front of you. How do you actually serve at a higher level? You get your big thing done so you can show up the best version of you to take care of everybody else. Mm-hmm. Take That's the really the key. of it as opposed to getting tossed about on a mechanical bull called your day of somebody else's A plan. mechanical bull. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm from Denver, why, man. I'm why did the you. genuine pony song just come into my head? Because you are unique. Wow. 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 Woo. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to even sing that. So when I say focus your power, it's not just avoiding things that can start to pull you down, but employing things that can elevate you. And so for me, it's brain training. This is a time for meditation. This is a time for really, quote, getting my mind right and being able to focus on my own objective and to be able to find a sense of peace and connectivity and focus to start the day to execute. Because another reason we're not executing, getting things done is we feel scattered. And meditation is one of these proven tools that we all have access to, that we can have in our superhero utility belt to employ. But again, it's the practice. It's called a meditation practice. It's not something you do every now and then inspect, you know, like, come on, inner peace. Come on. I'm waiting for you. It's not (laughs) going to work that way. (laughs) Hurry up. I've got five minutes for inner peace. (laughs) It's understanding that you create that. You create this space. And I've experienced this firsthand, you know, starting off, you know, I've been meditating for uh, at least at least 10 years, at least a decade. And everything I do has a purpose. I'm not doing this just because, right? I'm doing this because of the results that I've seen in my life. It literally transformed my life. Mm-hmm. If people were to ask me, like, what's the number one thing that helped me to go from where I, where I was to where I am, I'd say meditation. Sure, sure. For sure, because it created that space to where... I can become clear. I can become uh, focused and and vision. You know, there's a big part of visualization that can be employed in this space as well. And I want to share with you guys a couple of studies here as well. And these are directly from my book, Sleep Smarter. And there was a study that was published in the journal Brain Research Bulletin. And researchers discovered that people trained to meditate over an eight-week period were better able to control specific types of brain waves called alpha rhythms, Right. This is getting you in an alpha state. This is getting you, getting your brain into flow, all right? And mm-hmm. that's just one. So Ash, let, let me shift gears really quickly because there's a ton of studies in here, but mm-hmm. one for health. There, this is from the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta found that meditation lowered blood pressure and reduced the risk of heart disease and stroke. And numerous studies also demonstrate that meditation can reduce chronic pain and associated 
inflammatory biomarkers. You can literally, it's clinically proven, you can reduce inflammation in your body by meditating. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And also, of course, I talked about the relationship to sleep in the book, and this was the American Academy of Sleep Medicine published a study finding that meditation, it's clinically proven to be an effective treatment for insomnia, Mm. equal to that of some of the popular insomnia medications. This is free. Mm Mm-hmm. This is free. Yeah. You no side effects. Power. All right. Now here, here's the thing. Yeah. The study showed that over a two month period, and this is again, consistent meditation daily, they were meditating in the morning, helped them sleep better at night no, sure. because they had the tool available to basically minimize all those windows of your mind that are open <laughs> when you're trying to go to bed. Right. We, we want to, it's not that we don't want to be able to have a lot of things going on in our mind that helps us be successful. Mm-hmm. If somebody needs an answer on something, If you don't have 10 windows open, you might not be able to pull that data out, right? But when we want to go to sleep, we want to be able to minimize those and just keep the sleep window open, Yeah. right? It's not about not having thoughts. You're going to have thoughts. You have a brain. If I only had a brain. (laughs) (laughs) Is that the Wiz version or is that the the classic uh, Wizard of Oz? All right, either way. (laughs) Shout out to- I love them both. Shout out to Michael Jackson as the Scarecrow. As the Scarecrow. It's, It's kind of weird though, right? Wizard of Oz is weird. He rocked that, though. Yeah, he did. He yeah, did that. Yeah. So here's what they discovered. The study showed <laughs> that... Went down memory. The, the study showed that a two-month period, this is all the things that were improved. Sleep latency. This means they fell asleep faster. Uh, total sleep time. So they actually slept longer via meditation. Wake after sleep onset was reduced. So this means they woke up less frequently. Sleep efficiency. So this is what really Sleep Smarter is all about. How to get... Better sleep, not sleep more, but how can you sleep better? And so this is actually efficiently moving in and out of the right stages of sleep. Their sleep quality improved, overall sleep quality, and also a decrease in their symptoms of depression in all of the patients who use meditation, all right? This is not some airy-fairy thing. This is something that is real, and this is something that has solid science backing its efficacy. And if we can employ this, we make this a part of our morning ritual this puts us in a place to really be able to focus our power. Absolutely. And you talk about, you said, I don't do these things just because. I do them for a reason. What I gather from that is that you're the cause of the things that are to be, as opposed to there are other things that prevent or dictate. So just even changing that to, I'm not doing it because I am the cause in the matter of the things that will be. I will have a greater day. I will have greater greater sleep, and I'm the cause in that. Love that. I will perform greater. So I love that. I I got it from you. I love it. I love it. You are the cause of the things to be. Now let's go ahead and move on to number four here on our list of the six F's. These are the things we want to employ in our morning routine, or six things that you can pull from. All right. So we covered fuel your circulation. Number two is feed your mind. Number three is focus your power. Number four is fire up your metabolism. We can start our day in a metabolic advantage by adding in some smart exercise. So why is that? Well, exercise, we've all experienced this, right? We get this, quote, runner's high. We get the endorphins flowing. We start to feel good when we exercise and move our bodies. And for many people, This is one of the only times because they've got some things going on with their hormones, which we've done multiple shows on this. We just did one with Dr. Alan Christensen talking about adrenal fatigue. Got to listen to that episode. But during exercise, because it Mm kickstarts that system and making you feel good. We got the endorphins and enkephalins flowing. So that's one component of it. But also movement generates a certain form of electricity called piezoelectricity. You literally are charging up your cells when you move. How powerful is that? And I often refer people to this statement that humans don't get energy. Yes. Because people come into my clinic and they're like, Sean, what can I take? What can I take to have more energy? Mm -hmm. But people, we don't get energy. We create energy. Mm -hmm. You are an energy creating entity, right? It's sort of like this why in the matrix they were using people as batteries, right? Yes. Because you do have this energy currency, Uh this electromagnetic power. Like you can literally, if there was a way to harness the power you have in your body, you can light up a city. And you know what's deep about that is that they weren't just plugged in. They had a mental reality of movement, action, life, Mm. ordinary carrying on. So it wasn't like it was just a a stagnant state. 
Right, there was deep. activity. Yeah. Deep so as the ocean really, so right that now. They could just see. Whoa. 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 <laughs> I know Kung Fu. All right. So know, we've, got the, we've got the, we've got the piezoelectricity, the endorphins, the encephalines. And uh, also, this is just a great way to start your day because how you start your morning is going to show up for you when you lay your head down on your mattress at night, as per the study that cited in Sleep Smarter as well with Appalachian State University. And they had exercisers to train at three different times exclusively throughout the study period. So stage one, they had them exercise exclusively at 7 a.m. in the morning and tracked all their results. Phase two of the study, they had them to train exclusively at 1 p.m. in the afternoon Phase three, they had them to train exclusively at 7 p.m. at night. And what they found was that the morning exercisers spent more time in the deepest, most anabolic stages of sleep than the other two times when they were exercising. They also tended to sleep longer. And most importantly, this is the piece here again, is that they had more efficient sleep cycles. And they found that when people exercise in the morning, they had an average of a 25% greater blood pressure drop at night than the other two groups. So that speaks to an activation of what's called your parasympathetic nervous system or your rest and digest system and a deactivation of your sympathetic fight or flight system, which Allah helps you sleep better. <laughs> All right. So what do we need to do here for many people listening? Like, and I, I did this as a, before I, sleep smarter came out, I had to do this. I did it for an entire year. I did a test to see what happens because I've been a morning exerciser for a long time. Like as far as I can remember when I got my act together right. with taking care of my own health, right. Right. I exercise in the morning most of the time. And so I decided I'm going to exercise in the late afternoon, early evening for an entire year and see if I could still get the results. Because for guys in particular, for some ladies too, it's like, it's all about our gains. Like I don't mess up my gains. <laughs> and so for me, it was like, I'm still going to do five minutes of exercise in the morning, but I don't want that to mess up my training later. Everything improved. Testosterone went up. Strength uh, numbers went up radically. Um, my reaction time improved, everything got better. So my morning exercise, because this is the key, even if you are exercising after work, get in five minutes in the morning yeah. so you can get some of these benefits because what that is is something we call a cortisol reset. Mm -hmm. So it helps to get your cortisol elevated normally like it should be. Uh, in, if we're looking at evolutionary biology, our cortisol should be peaked in the morning between 6 and 8 a.m. and then it'll gradually drop as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. We can have some spikes here or there, but that's the track. And this is why so many people are tired in the morning because their cortisol, that coffee pot of cortisol is actually not filled. It's not, it's not ready to get poured out yet. And to get exercise and it gets that, that coffee pot filled up. It's it brewing. One thing that really inspires me then about how you share your previous morning routine and how difficult it was to get going, it just really inspires hope hmm. in the idea that, look at you now. I mean, it's even hard to believe that you ever were in that place. Yeah. And it was, a very, it was a real place. It actually yeah. existed. Yeah. yeah. And wherever we may be on the spectrum, that each new day can be that story yeah. in a day. You know, I asked my wife just yesterday. Yeah. I was like, did I ever, t because she, you know, she's been there at so many talks that I've done, like literally all over the world mm -hmm. and she's been there and, you know, she, she was like, just like cracking up at this <laughs> last talk that I did. And the guy who put the event together, he was like, she was really into this. <laughs> He's like, do you not listen to him speak often? She's like, yeah, all the time, you know, but it's these different elements. Right. And, you know, of course, just having, having a good time while still teaching. But uh, I asked her, I was like, have I ever, like when we got together, did I share my story with you? And because I, I knew that I didn't, but I knew I shared pieces and she was like, no, not really. I mean, you mentioned facets of like, you know, when you were dealing with this issue, like, you know, struggles with your, you know, with school and things like that. Like I, I shared pieces because I was in the story. Right. The story was still getting written. It was right. She right. Was there so the was pieces there. were happening. And as wow. I started to employ more and more of these pieces that I'm sharing with you guys, it led to where we are today, to where my where I have the story to share. Exactly. You know, and so it was just like, wow, I really, because I was in process. Mm -hmm. And we really are. It's all of this stuff is really a process of becoming, right, right? right? And it doesn't stop. And how can we continue to get better? Even 1% each day is starting your day with the win by employing these things. So we're going to move That's on powerful. to number five here on our list of the six F's to optimize and create your morning routine. And number five here is to fortify your health. Now, the first thing that you have when you start your day, this is your breaking your fast. It's 
obviously going to impact your tissues a little bit stronger because your body doesn't really have anything directly like in your in your belly, right? In your quote, in, quote, in your in your belly. <laughs> However, of course, there are still going to be some reserves scattered throughout your your tissues, and there's going to be food in your in your intestine somewhere. But I'm talking about when you take that first thing in, it's going to hit your system a, without a lot of interference. So it matters, and I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so it does. for me, what I've been doing every single morning, every morning without fail for well over a year now is I'm employing my favorite mushroom elixirs. And so when people hear that, it's like, is that like a a button mushroom? (laughs) Or is it shrooms? No, these are are medicinal (laughs) mushrooms with, I mean, when you look at the research on this stuff, it is so mind-blowing. And people have no idea, like, you know, this category of of, of fungi, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, that about 44% of the medications that people are getting from their local pharmacy are based on these fungi, wow. right? It's crazy. It's crazy. There's literally so much long history of medicinal benefit, but you can't pat nature though. So these medicinal mushrooms are in a league of their own. So for me today, especially if I'm doing some mental work, some mental labor, I love to have lion's mane, which is looking at increasingly being studied for its neuroprotective effects. University of Malaya confirmed the neuro regenerative potential of lion's mane mushroom. They actually looked at it and saw what happens with brain tissue, especially for accidents, like people that need to grow yeah, tissue. Yeah, repair. Uh, amazing. Wow. How many things can you say have this capacity? And, and not enough people know about this yet, and that's why it's so important to talk about this. Also, featuring powerful classes of nerve growth factors, all right, nerve growth factors. And these are molecules that stimulate the differentiation and remyelination of your neurons, All right. We've been talking about myelin. This medicinal mushroom helps to make that process work better. Powerful stuff. And so I use the medicinal mushroom elixirs from Four Sigmatic and I've been doing so for over a year. I love them because they do a dual extraction. So that means they're doing an extract, a a hot water extract and an alcohol extract so that you're getting all of the stuff that they say is in the medicinal mushroom. Because some of these different studies, if they're not doing the same extract method, you're not getting the beta glucans or you're not getting the, the terpenes. Right. You're not getting the different antioxidants, the superoxide dismutase or whatever the case might be. You can get access to all of these things when you do a dual extract. When I say alcohol extract, it does not mean there's alcohol in it. All right. So you're not going to be like, oh, I see. Good morning. Like I got my mushrooms Good and morning. my alcohol. <laughs> so this is um, very intelligently done and, and it's so super easy, quick to utilize as well. Like when I'm on the road, I've got these little oh, yeah. packets and I just brought you a little goodie, a little box I of them. Know. And so for people who love coffee, you've got to try the Four Sigmatic it's coffees. Good. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's yeah. absurd. It takes your whole experience to another level. Plus, coffee, it teeters on the acidic side. Well, it's, it jumped all the way into the acidic <laughs> yeah. pool, all right? And so medicinal mushrooms that they combine it with, they're very alkaline. So it's much more neutral in how it hits hit your system. But also, we are adding in the components. Like, you get that little bit of caffeine, which has these stimulating effects for your uh, nervous system as well. Like it's just hits on so many different levels. Yeah, so they've right got the there. lion's mane combo in one of the coffees. They've got a cordyceps coffee, mm-hmm. which cordyceps is clinically proven to improve insulin sensitivity. It's clinically proven to improve your endurance. This isn't, again, it's not like a, some supplement where you're saying, this is going to improve your endurance. Take this company X supplement. Mm-hmm. This actually has clinical data, all right? Right. To improve your endurance, right. improve the your body's ability to utilize oxygen. Let me put it like that. So if you're not utilizing Four Sigmatic's amazing mushroom elixirs, head over there, check them out right now. It's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com forward slash M-O-D-E-L. So that's Four Sigmatic dot com forward slash model. And you're going to get 15% off all of their incredible formulas Hashtag you're welcome. You've got to take <laughs> advantage of this. I'm telling you. And you go to my house, you open my cabinets, you just see four sigmatic boxes great, just great. like I've got all of them I because I love them. And I and I, I change them up as right. well because that's the great thing about it too, is like giving your body these different uh, adaptogens, giving your body these different notes so it doesn't get used to one thing, right? Right. right. And so well, I, I truly love those guys. As a woman and a, and things change for us. Uh, regularly, I like to rotate and then especially look forward to Rishi, the one with Rishi mm. for the for mood 
mm. having the best mood. And I know that sometimes it's just not like that. It might be mid month. And so mm. it works that way. Great. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rishi is the, it's known as a queen uh, in, that, you know? in the mushroom kingdom. And, <laughs> Which thousands of years of documented history of use, and it's also clinically proven to increase your NK cell activity over 300%. So these are your natural killer cells. Your body literally, it's like training for your immune system. It's like a Ninjago camp, all right? (laughs) So your immune system becomes far more uh, effective at detecting and eliminating pathogens Mm -hmm. that find their way into your system, all right? Spinjitsu like a mother. All right. So <laughs> I know make sure to check them out. Forsigmatic.com yeah. forward slash model. Now let's move on to number six. And oh, really quickly, one other note here. Sure. This is something I do. You know, if you're doing your morning cup of coffee, uh, make it this, you know, mushroom mm-hmm. coffee. Or, you know, if somebody's doing the tea, if they're not into the coffee, they have the straight, you know, the, the tea elixirs mm-hmm. with the chaga, lion's mane, cordyceps, those kind of things. Or something else, like whatever it is for you, give yourself like some medicinal bang for your buck, like something to put that... Get that momentum rolling with your nutrition to start your day. I highly recommend that. Become a medicinal mushroom mixologist. Well, there you go. (laughs) I'm going to snap again for you. Okay. Encore. All right. Now, so let's move on to number six. So we've covered here with our six F's. Fuel your circulation. Feed your mind. Focus your power. Fire up your metabolism. Fortify your health. Number six is fulfill your mission. Oh, come on. That is awesome. So it starts with this very simple question. What is your mission for the day? What is your mission for the day? Because the big mission has smaller components. What is the one thing that you want to execute on for this day to move you closer to your ultimate goal? And if you don't get a clear view on what that is, how in the world are you going to get where you want to be? You have to get clear on what that is and answer the question. What is your mission for the day? What is the one thing it's going to help knock over all the other dominoes. And so it's like with, with the map, right? Uh, Dora the Explorer, right? <laughs> when they're trying Don't to get, get somewhere, time. the on map the, comes out, right? On the map, on the map, yes. On the map. Yes. Right? It's like, <laughs> I'm the map. <laughs> kind of got some. Uh, I think he got a record deal, so we he haven't had heard from him have. in a while. Yeah, <laughs> It's called uh, Trap Map. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> also, without the map, right, if you don't know where you're going, you become more susceptible mm-hmm. to distraction, a.k.a. swiper. Mm-hmm. All right. Swiper, no <laughs> swiping. <laughs> swiper, no swiping. You, how do you know this so well? So I wonder. Here's, these are the keys. These are the keys here. Having that map and asking the question, what is your mission for, t- for today? Right. You don't have to conquer the world in one day. Right. But just what is the number one thing? What, what's the thing that's going to move you forward the most? And it's it goes back to the statement of eat the frog, right? Like yeah. what is that number, the big thing, get that big thing out of the way and the rest of the day is downhill from there. Mm-hmm. That um, the biggest task, ass. let me, uh, this is like the the domino effect, yeah. right? That Jay Papazan talked about, mm-hmm. you know, the author of the one thing. And what is the one thing that can knock over all the other dominoes? What's that big thing that moves everything else forward? That's what you've got to do. And for me personally, I love creating a tomorrow list. All right. Oh. So I do this the night before, right? Where I know what I'm going to execute on and it starts that subconscious patterning already. And then in the morning, I could just recap, like go and review what that's going to look like. And they're great tools to help you to do that. Like the Freedom Journal, you know, with John Lee Dumas yes. and when he was on. So we've covered our six F's and the last one was to fulfill your mission. It's as simple as that. What direction are you going? What is a big thing? And... I hope that you got some value out of that piece, but I want to add in some other things that you might want to mix into your morning routine. I'm just going to bullet point these. Mm -hmm. Another thing you could do is journaling. Mm -hmm. And we did an extensive, like expressive writing episode. That was episode 172 with Katie Dalebo. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, with John Lee Dumas, who's just a mega star. He's a mega star. He's (laughs) killing it. Killing it. And that's episode 138. Everything will be in the show notes at themodelhealthshow.com, of course, guys. Shout out to Kate. Hop over there. And also, you can do it on iTunes as oh. well. You click, click on the little, uh, our little icon for this episode and whatever. You, you know, you'll figure it out. Right. It's very intuitive. They say Apple's intuitive, right? <laughs> uh, Qigong. You can add in Qigong. This, this adds in the movement piece and the meditation piece at once with Tristan Tr- Truscott. Yes. One of my good and friends. Yeah. Episode 154. Uh, focus work time. This might be a time for you in your morning routine where you get 30 minutes of power session in of writing or of research. I love to have this as part of my day. Mm-hmm. Breakfast, you know, this can be something that's added into your morning routine 
or if you're doing intermittent fasting or if you're just doing the the elixir like I'm doing for the first part of the day, you know, and so episode 124, eight incredible health benefits of fasting. We did that as well. Uh, shower, obviously, you know, another <laughs> F here could be like, fix yourself up, <laughs> freshen up, All right, freshen up. <laughs> All right. So oh, shower, which with, for couple. me today, uh-huh. I ended my shower with the cold. I right? know the, you co- did. We did an episode, oh cold thermogenesis, the benefits of cold thermogenesis, episode 127, it's game Eddie changer. Brown, Check that out. Edibles. All right. Now, lastly, I want to tie in some stars, like yeah. some other people's. Uh, morning routines and to to see and see if you know to notice a pattern here okay. we're going to go back in history first to start with so we're going to look at benjamin franklin okay all right it's all about the benjamins it's literally <laughs> like it's t- right, if you're all about the benjamins do what ben did, did. Ben did. you do want benjamin follow ben follow ben. all right so here's what here's what he had to say he said wisdom is measured in routine wisdom is measured in routine and so he actually has, and this is out there on the internet. I've seen this uh, many years ago. His actually uh, written up morning schedule. And it starts with between the hours, and he has this structured off as, uh, as morning from five to seven. And this is what he has here. So he starts off with this morning, the question, what good shall I do this day? That's how it starts. The question, what good shall I do this day? And so for me, and before I even saw this was something that existed every morning, which I did this morning. The first thing that I do when I become aware that I'm aware, you know, I wake up, I ask, how can I serve today? That's the first thing that I do every single morning without fail. And it's not like I'm looking for an answer. I no. just let let life hand that to me. I was going to say, I can guar- do a few things. <laughs> guarantee <laughs> guarantee yeah. throughout the day, I'm going to find those places where I can be of service. And mm-hmm. it starts the order of the day. You know, how can I serve today? Mm-hmm. And so then we, he shifts gears here. And so this is what is five to seven. His morning routine is rise, wash, and address powerful goodness. He wants to address powerful goodness, contrive, the day's business. So he's doing his planning for the day. He's getting out his structure, his, his big goal. What is the goal for today? What is the big thing he wants to accomplish today? And also it says he takes the resolution of the day. All right. Takes the resolution of the day. So it's kind of like if you're looking at um, affirmation, right? Take the resolution of the day. Also, he says within this time frame in his morning routine, Prosecute the present study. All right. So this is his time for feeding his mind. Mm-hmm. That's what he's doing. And breakfast. That's how Benjamin Franklin starts <laughs> his day. And notice if you see any consistencies here. Oh, so yeah. we're, we're going to start there. So next up, I sent a message out to some of the most successful people that I know, some friends of mine, and, you know, had them to text me back. Like, what does your morning routine look like? And I might have heard pieces of it before. But for most of them, I didn't know. But surprise, surprise, they all do have this morning routine. And so the first one is going to be, this is from Natalie Jill. Oh, yeah. All right. Nice. Superstar, Mm -hmm. right? Fitness. Natalie Jill Fit, all right? Just like she's she's crushing it, her social media influence. And she's just such a, a heartwarming, like, good person. And she is somebody who, her story is, she became a cover model. Like when she was almost 40, it was the first time that happened. She made this decision after going through all of these problems with her health, but she felt so compelled, like she has to share this and she has to do this in a way that reaches a lot of people, especially women who are in that story. Like, you know, this is not possible. Mm-hmm. And she's a mom as well. Like, and again, it's another thing we use as a story instead of a, instead of a motivation, mm-hmm. instead of something that helps to spur on some greatness. It's like, I can't because. And so Natalie Jill, this is how she starts her day. She says she's up at 6 a.m., snuggle with husband. Uh, She listens to a podcast while getting dressed. And then she takes her time uh, making and eating breakfast and and having tea while writing in her gratitude journal. And then she's going over and and choosing her three main goals for the day. And after that, she just kind of writes that stuff down, wraps up her morning routines, then she just goes and executes. So that's how she starts her day. It's pretty simple. Fantastic. So now, how about my guy, Pat Flynn? Hey, he is the creator of Smart Passive Income. He's helped, I mean, easily a couple hundred thousand people to transform their lives and to really start to make 
a living doing more work that they love and also just making a living period because things, the game has changed, yeah. right? The game has changed and people finding a way because as we've talked about with, um, with Dr. Roy's and financial stress, that's the, one of the, that's one of the top three biggest stressors for people that are causing problems with our health. And so I love Pat Flynn. So here's his morning routine. And it's changed over the years as his kids have gotten older. Yeah. He has two kids as well. Uh-huh. So he gets up at 4, 4 a.m. I'm with him. He splashes water on his face three times. It's a pattern. It's that specific. Then he brushes his teeth. Uh, he has some food and coffee. And he journals while he's eating. And after that, he does some meditation. And Wednesday and Friday, he's playing five-on-five five basketball. Uh, and this is early. I think he goes, at, it's like at five o'clock or something. And other days he's reading for 20 to 30 minutes before he starts his day. Then he gets, uh, the, the kids get up, he cooks and eats with them. If that's how the schedule is going. And he says, obviously shower after playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is, this is Pat's morning routine. Did you notice any consistencies? Absolutely. Have you heard this multiple times yet? Absolutely. All right. So now let's look at Drew Manning. Hey. Uh, Drew is one of my friends, really close friends. Love this guy. And of course, he was on the show as well. Uh, fit to Fat to Fit. So he's the trainer. Changed the game. It's become a TV show is, uh, on A&E. Very successful show. I think it's the second season is about to come out if it isn't already. Mm-hmm. But he purposely gained 70 pounds to experience what it was like because he felt like he just didn't understand. Like, with, when he's working with his clients, like, why don't you, ju- it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. And it totally changed his whole perspective, you know, and there's a lot to glean from his example, but he really understood about emotional eating. He really understood about this emotional attachment to food. He really ex- understood how embarrassing he felt when he would go to the gym and he just couldn't do the things that everyone one else was doing. And it made him feel like he didn't want to go. Like all these different small things that somebody might experience that we can bring more love and compassion and support to. Right. And he did this. And yes. so, um, let's see. His his thing is uh, 6 a.m. wake up, 601 P, 602, <laughs> so funny. 602 drinks water with a little sea salt. Uh, then he meditates after that at 605. Uh, 10 minutes for that. And then he does some affirmations after meditation. Uh, around 620, he's having his coffee. He's doing a gratitude journal. And then he jumps on emails at, you know, this is about 30 plus minutes after he gets up, but he gets his morning routine in. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just this 30 minutes, he got all of these things. Guess what? He started the day winning. So that's Drew Manning. Uh, Danielle Natoni, fit and funky mm-hmm. on everything. All right. Mm-hmm. Especially got to check out on Instagram at fit and funky. And I love her and her husband, Darren, yes. two of my favorite people as well. Tell them and I so said hi. this is what she sent over. And by the way, I mean, my goodness, right. she's just killing it. She's killing it on every level. It's just amazing to see her and what she's accomplishing. So she says up at 6 a.m. P. There's another P again. <laughs> uh, drink water. P again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she has pre-workout. And let's see. She takes a pre-workout uh, post. For social media, so she's on her. If you want to build your social media, you need to check out what she's doing. Oh man, it's amazing. If you want to um, dream big? Watch her workout. So pre workout, pre workout picture. Oh my! Then God. the workout. Exactly. Where she posts a lot of clips from her workouts as well, which are no joke. Then she takes a post workout video. Um, then she grabs her computer and coffee, and she gets to work. Mm-hmm. That's how she starts her day. Mm-hmm. See another cons- drinks water, right? Right. Up powerful. Mm-hmm. Powerful. It just got me thinking too with the because people are like I don't want to drink that much water because I'm have to pee. That's a problem. <laughs> right. It's a problem to pee, you know. And of course, there's extenuate. Like I've I've worked with many, um, you know, teachers over the years. Oh, sure. You know, I've worked with people in so many different fields. But it's like I can't leave the classroom, whatever. Get this morning piece in, right? right? You could drink a little <laughs> bit more. Morning pee. <laughs> right. <laughs> get this. Get this in, and then you'll be able to modulate throughout the day a little bit. You know, more of a strategy. Better, but yeah. the bottom line is. You need to be peeing. This is like your filter for all of this, like getting rid of metabolic waste. It's not a problem going pee. And, you know, one of the things, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool if like somebody can go pee for you, right? It's like, right. Uh, you know, tell your kid, like, go, go grab the remote. Right, right. Go you pee go, go pee for me while you're up. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's one of the things that you have to do yourself. Go like Jim Rohn says, <laughs> no one could do your push-ups for you. Right. No one can go pee, pee for, you. for you. All right. But you need to get hydrated. <laughs> oh all right. It's God. a good thing. 
All right. Lastly, I've got one more here. And again, this is another really good friend, Michael Morelli. The Sweet Potato Diet, yes. baby. Oh, my. The recipes in that book. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you. So, so good. And so, and Michael has just been, he, he's, he's a beast. Yeah. Like, he's just been killing the game. All right. <laughs> And so he's he's the fitness guy. Mm -hmm. He says that what he does is he essentially he goes to sleep around the time the sun goes down and wakes up around the time the sun comes up, which is somewhere around four o'clock for him. And he has coffee. That's the first thing he does. High quality, organic. Mm -hmm. He has that good stuff. Uh, then he uh, I guess he jumps in the pool, does a little pool work. He does some reading. And so he, he likes more of a spiritual te text. To start the day, something that's self-development, spiritual, kind of getting that part of the, the heart and the mind uh, combination going. Mm -hmm. And then he does his training after that. And so that's how he starts the day. And then he says he uh, crushes it the rest of the day. But he of actually course. put some explicits in here, you know, just like <laughs> and then he just gets on it. Right. He crushes right, it. I bet there are some F's in that. And so <laughs> every day, the six F's. Uh -huh. I love that. I love that. Uh -huh. So every day, that's what you're talking about, right? Six yes, F's. Of course. Every day, uh, he says... That's it just depends on the day, whether or not he's he's eating before he trains. It just kind of depends on right, the day. But right. there's a consistency. Did you see again these consistent pieces from each of these people in their different res their respective fields, their respective life experiences as well? We always have a way. Yeah. And we could take from these incredible individuals and add these pieces to our overall strategy. And so in closing, I really want to just wrap this piece up and to deliver a few extra additional tips to help you to crush your day as well by creating your own powerful morning routine. So number one, and keep in mind this critical fact, a great morning starts the night before. All right. A great morning starts the night before. If you haven't done so already, make sure to listen to episode 216. I think that's the one to go to after this episode. And that's the one we did evening routines that enhance sleep accelerate fat loss, and supercharge your brain. You're going to make your morning routine all that much sweeter by actually feeling good when you wake up in the morning. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that's number one, is a great morning starts the night before and to use that to your advantage. Number two is to customize it. This isn't a cookie cutter thing. You can take and add pieces that feel good for you because each of these people have experimented with a lot of things as well. And they find the thing that works for them and you just keep doing it because the benefits just keep adding up and adding up. So customize it. Number three is to adjust for extenuating circumstances. So my morning routine might typically be an hour, but you know, I'm traveling. I've got to talk early in the morning and I, sleep is important. So I condense it down to 20 minute process, you know, instead of doing 10 minutes for each thing. Now, maybe it's three minutes for each thing or whatever the case might be, you know, for extenuating circumstances, have some flexibility, but don't forfeit your morning routine, your brain and your body expecting those things. Find a way to add those pieces in. And some of those things is like when you're traveling, for example, or you got family and kids, you know, maybe it's some uh, parents are staying over and some random thing. Or, of course, if you got kids, they got curveballs. <laughs> All right, yeah, they, they they've got the split finger curve <laughs> coming at you. All right, and I'm thinking about and the movie, fast, which I never yeah. saw. It. Yeah. Uh, Trouble with the curve is that what it's called? I don't know. With the uh, uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's probably good, but <laughs> if you if you haven't seen the movie, if I guess don't Clint see it. Eastwood, I guess I don't see it. I believe it would be. Yeah. So travel, family, kids, and another one is abnormal time restriction. You know, so this is when something is on your calendar at a random time and you've got to adjust for that so adjust for extenuating circumstances number four is to schedule it actually schedule your morning routine put it on your calendar you can actually allot it for a block of time so maybe it's a 30 minute thing you just block off on your calendar so that alert comes up you know but for me it shouldn't be so you're going to your phone though for me i don't even see my phone first thing in the morning which i'm going to address in just a second to start the day most of the time. Nobody's perfect, right? <laughs> but, you know, for me, it's like uh, morning routine. It shows up right there on my, on my phone. Yes. And, or you can break it into the components. Mm -hmm. Like Drew did, like, by the minute for yes, him. Dude. You know, it's just like, it's 6 o'clock this, 6 on one that. You know, so you can break it down. But bottom line is schedule it. Mm -hmm. Actually put on a schedule so it creates another layer of accountability for yourself. Puts it into existence. And I do the same thing for my, you know, when I expect to be in the bed. Like, that's on my calendar, like, Nighty night, yeah. right? All right, so number five here, and this tip is super valuable, is to combine morning rituals that fit well together. 
if you want to. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it all work, if you, especially with time constraints or just might feel good to you. For example, exercise while listening to a podcast. Or right? do laundry. And what somebody's doing right now, <laughs> shout out to you. That's I it. see you. I'm with you. That's right. Let's go. Fabric softener, baby. What? If you're doing laundry. I mean, you were talking about the exercise. For me. <laughs> I'm over. See. That's how I combine. I thought we were here. We are. And you were do, you were in the laundry. Somebody's got to keep the shirts right. fresh. You know. There you go. I like that. <laughs> also, of course, you can, you know, sip on your morning elixir while while reading or having your breakfast while while reading or journaling, like Natalie Jill mentioned, you know. So there's these wonderful options and ways to combine things, but the bottom line is you can combine these rituals if you like to put it all together in a cohesive fashion for you because that's what it's all about. So last quick point, just a reminder of, you know, our morning ritual. We want to start by executing on our number one goal for the day. And so going over to your phone and hopping on uh, social media, answering questions, that kind of thing, it distracts you. So get your morning routine in and then you've got time and you've already got your wins so that you can do whatever it is that you are going to do on your phone or check an email or whatever the case might be. But take care of you first. Employ these strategies that you've learned today. Create a consistent, powerful morning routine so that you can live the life that you truly want. And so thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I truly, truly appreciate you. And if you feel that this was valuable and something that could be helpful for your friends and family, make sure to share this out on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. LinkedIn, you can share it up there. Send it to them in an email, but just help other people to start crushing life by employing their own morning ritual and how powerful that can be and adding some of the science behind it and some of the strategies, just giving people options because, you know, in today's time, we're living in the time of the greatest distraction. There's so much coming at us. If we can start our day with some normalcy, if we can start our day by getting in some early wins, it can really set the tone for building some powerful momentum to truly becoming the best version of ourselves. So I appreciate you so much. Take care. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon. And make sure for more after the show, you head over to themodelhealthshow.com. That's where you can find the show notes. And if you've got any questions or comments, make sure to let me know. And please head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating and let everybody know that our show is awesome yeah. and you're loving it. Yeah. And I read all the comments, so please leave me a comment there. And take care, everybody. I promise to keep giving you more powerful, empowering great content to help transform your life. Thanks for tuning in.